Marhaba. That is one way to say hello in the country of Syria. In this video, we'll discuss serial in, serial out registers, which means these are registers that accept input data one bit at a time and transmit output data one bit at a time. The data bits within the register move down the line one cell at a time, an operation called shifting. Because of this, you will often hear the term shift register. We can have shift registers that accept or transmit external data in parallel, but in this example, we see only serial in and serial out data. Each flip-flop in the schematic holds one bit of data, so this is a four-bit register. The names of these flip-flops are arbitrarily given as FF0 on the left through FF3 on the right. Be careful with this if you are using these registers to represent coherent four-bit numbers. Typically, you would read those left to right, which would make the most significant bit be stored in FF0 which is opposite of our standard notation. In that case, it may make sense to rename these flip-flops. Why didn't I change the names already in the slides and make it simpler? Because I want to emphasize the point that this shift register doesn't know it is holding a 4-bit number, and in many cases it won't be. This register is merely doing its job of accepting individual bits moving them one by one down the line, and sending out individual bits. We, as the designers, can adapt this basic operation to our purposes. The schematic that causes the shifting is a simple one. Just connect the output of one D flip-flop as the instruction input for the next one. That instruction will only be processed once every clock cycle, here at a positive edge. If we ever want to hold the data, we would need to pause the clock. A strategy for doing that will be shown in a couple minutes. And, as usual, there is an asynchronous clear switch connected to all of the flip-flops, which is useful if we want to reset the memory. Let's explore the operation a little further by asking a couple of questions. Best is if you pause the video after each question and try to predict the answer. Assume that the register currently holds the values 1, 1, 0, 0 from left to right. Also, serial in is held at 0 and clear is an inactive 1. First question, a negative edge occurs. What is the new data? The answer is 1, 1, 0, 0. Nothing has shifted. These flip-flops are positive edge triggered, so no change occurs yet. Second question. A positive edge occurs. What is the new data? The answer is 0, 1, 1, 0. This leading one moves down to the next flip-flop. This next one does the same. This 0 does the same. Where does the new leading 0 come from? It was brought in through the serial in port. And where does the former trailing zero go? It is sent off into some external system where maybe, for example, it sends the start signal for your next Tetris game. Final question. Another positive edge occurs. What is the new data? The answer is zero, zero, one, one. Again, we see the bits simply shifting down the line, with the new zero being passed in as the serial input. Let's watch all of this in action with the simulator. Here we see the shift register with the same starting values of 1100. 0, 0. I'll leave the clear switch inactive and hold the serial in at 0. Now I'll start the clock at a slow pace. We can watch as the bits move along the register. Now I'll flip serial in to 1, and we can see that 1s are now shifted into the leading flip-flop, and then on down the line. 
If at any point I want all zeros in the register, I can simply activate the clear signal. What I've done on this screen is converted the same register into a device symbol, with one small difference. For the sake of monitoring, I have output ports from each of the flip-flops. Here we can observe the same behavior of the bits shifting through on each clock cycle. Now I've used this device symbol to create a new circuit. Notice that the output bit of register A acts as the serial input for register B. Let's observe what happens as the clock runs. In effect, we have an 8-bit shift register. The first four bits are in A, the last four bits are in B. The trailing bit in A becomes the leading bit in B on the next clock cycle. Speaking of which, if I ever wanted to pause changes and simply hold data in the register, this enable switch allows me to do so. Flipping it low prevents the clock waveform from passing through and so disables the flip-flops from changing. Now that we have witnessed the operation, this slide question should be easy. Assume our circuit holds the value shown in the image. After the next positive edge of the clock, what will the new values be? The A values will be all ones, with the leading one due to serial in equaling one and the B values will be 0, 0, 0, 1. B's leading zero was the previous trailing value from A. That was one simple question for one clock cycle. A better way to understand and predict the behavior of registers is to make a table. Given our current background of the circuit and these inputs, we should be able to complete each row. There are two inputs to consider enable and serial in. As long as enable equals one, then we know that each bit will shift one slot to the right. In this row, the circuit is enabled. So we can fill in this one, 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 zero, 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 one. The final one leaves our system. And what about this leading blank? We just fill that in with the serial in value, which here is a one. Lather, rinse, repeat. On the next clock cycle, the cells will go 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. And now the serial in value is a 0, so that shifts in here. We continue this pattern for all remaining rows. Notice what happens on these two clock cycles when enable equals 0. No changes occur. Each row is identical to the row above it. The registers do no shifting and simply act as a memory bank. But then when the circuit is enabled again, it picks right up where it left off. Admittedly, building this basic register and tracking its progress through a table is tedious work. On its own, it's not too valuable. But we'll see in just a couple videos how this is an important piece in controlling data flow through larger circuits. In many applications, long strings of binary values need to be processed one bit at a time, and a shift register is just the tool for the job.